Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I want to do a little rating review on 15 to 16 nootropics and what I would rate them 1 out of 10. I was actually really excited to do this video because a lot of my opinions change so much. A lot of times when I'll shoot a video, a week or two later I'll have a slightly different opinion. I've tried several nootropics in a lot of other blends, but I'm only going to be reviewing nootropics that I've tried at least 10 times on their own. And most of these I've tried many, many, many times. Let's jump right into it with Teocrine. Now Teocrine I'm gonna have to go with an 8.5 out of 10 here because most people consider the standard of awakening stimulants or the normal one that everyone uses is caffeine. And in my opinion, um, teocrine just blows caffeine out the water in every aspect. Teocrine is essentially methylated caffeine, so it's the exact same thing with just an added methylation. It's a little bit less impulsive. It comes on a little bit slower. It leaves a little bit slower. It's much more balanced. It's much more of an awakened feel. Um, it also has a little bit of anti-inflammatory qualities, which is really good. It's supposed to have little to no crash, little to no jitters. The only reason I wouldn't say this is like a 9.5 or a 10 is because of the terrible taste. You absolutely have to take it in a capsule and you do need a good amount of it and I think this is pretty much the only one that's like caffeine but better in every way now dynamine a lot of people really like dynamine and dynamine is very similar to caffeine if you look at the chemical structure and kind of in the effects to me dynamine just feels very very similar to caffeine it kind of has this a little bit of a rushy vibe people really seem to like it people seem like oh I noticed the, the extra effect in there to me I don't really notice too much other than it kind of feels like caffeine if you had a high dose of caffeine I wouldn't want almost any dynamine you know a lot of times people will put a lot of dynamine with 150 milligrams caffeine I just really wouldn't like it I mean the most I'd want to go is maybe 50 milligrams of dynamine and like 100 milligrams of caffeine just for me personally just because dynamine for me it can be a little bit anxious and I don't really see too much of that extra feel-good vibe people say that dynamine is more fast-acting than caffeine I don't know if it's just me but I feel caffeine I mean within minutes so after I take a sip. So I don't need anything faster. And compared to tea cream, caffeine already is like a much quicker acting version of that. So I would pretty much rate Dynamine a 6.5 to a 7. It's really not my favorite, to be honest. In acetyl L tyrosine, now this is one of the nootropics that I tried probably first, probably one of the most original nootropics that I've tried. It's basically a play on tyrosine, and I really like tyrosine too. You could kind of go either way. They basically naturally boost dopamine. Now, tyrosine is found in almost all proteins out there in varying degrees and tyrosine just turns into L-dopa and then that turns into dopamine which is the feel-good transmitter so taking some tyrosine will eventually lead into more dopamine and the N-acetyl version is just a little bit stronger and uh, dopamine is pretty much the, the neurotransmitter that I like the most. It's the one that gets me up doing things the most. Now, again, if you go too hard on any one thing, you, you are going to get a little demotivated. You know, you got to be careful with it. But generally, I seem to respond the best to dopamine style things. And n tyrosine is one of the most infamous natural dopamine boosters. Okay, choline bitartrate and alpha GPC. Now, I know I shouldn't be grouping these together, but I have tried choline so, so much. I've tried them in varying doses. I only noticed too much of a difference they both feel very good it's this kind of like zinned out feeling this extra level of, of focus that's really pleasant I've always really liked choline it's one of the probably the, the gold standard of anything with nootropics has choline in it like I wouldn't think there would be a nootropic that didn't have choline in it and I would probably go um, 8.5 out of 10 it's probably one of the most classic ones uh, I just don't think I get an insane level of effect off choline but it's something that I'd always want incorporated into like a nootropic stack for sure L Theanine, I'm gonna go with a 7.5 to an 8. Initially, I really liked L theanine, but I almost think that it's a little bit more of a relaxing style thing. Um, maybe something I would want to use kind of at the end of the day. L theanine is found in green tea, so a lot of times people will mix it with caffeine to get that similar effect. And I do think maybe L theanine would be something you could use to kind of like calm you down if you're amped up too much. But I do think it has such a relaxing, sedating kind of quality. Not really overly sedating, but it can get you a little bit less of that really peaked level focus. Just you'll be a little bit more relaxed. So I really wouldn't use it in every situation. To me, it, more recently, it's something I would use to relax. L-theanine, and I would give that a 7.5 to an 8. Phenylpracetam hydrazide. Now this one, uh, I would rate a 9 out of 10. This is pretty much like my favorite nootropic. Um, again, it has the bad effect of it tasting bad. This stuff is just absolutely 
absolutely blows me away. It has this dopamine boosting effect on top of, I think it helps with choline as well. All the racetams boost choline, but this one specifically boosts dopamine. Now, I read one article where an airline pilot called phenylparacetam the great balancer, and that's what I get with phenylparacetam. It's just such a pleasant nootropic because you get this awakened feeling, you get this feel-good feeling, but then you get this balance afterwards. Like the more that I take it, the more I feel balanced, you know what I mean? And then it has this weird tolerance to it, like I said, where it takes four or five days to really, really kick in, and then maybe after a month of taking it, it's, you're not gonna feel it that much. So you kind of have to take it for a while, let it wind down, but remember, you're gonna have to probably take it three or four days for it to start having that effect again. I've had people come on my channel and say, I just took a lot of phenylparacetam hydrazide, I don't feel it. And when I've taken a big break and I come back to it, I'm really surprised too. I'll take a ton of it and I don't feel really anything, but then you take it for a few days and it's just one of the best things ever. And it's almost kind of like the closest thing I would use to like an actual prescription because like I said, it really boosts my mood. It really gets me engaged in things. You could recall memories a little bit better and your speech is a little bit better. And then on top of that, you feel more balanced. Like I would just feel, if I was out of whack, taking this would make me feel more balanced for me personally. So I absolutely love phenylparacetam hydrazide. I'm have to give it a nine out of 10. Coloracetam, now this one is, was a little bit light, but I really seem to enjoy it. Um, this one was patented, it was sold a bunch, it was almost gonna become a prescription, and I think it just basically turns choline into acetylcholine in the body, and acetylcholine is kind of the neurotransmitter we're going for here. There's a lot of people online who will say coloracetam is their favorite racetam, and I could totally see why that is, because a little bit of energy, slight less anxiety, a little bit more cognitive function, just everything's just flowing a little bit better. Like to me, when I think of racetam, it should be coloracetam, but this is just me personally. Like, I don't know if you'd have that effect, but I love coloracetam, eight out of 10. Pramoracetam, now I'm gonna have to give pramoracetam an 8.5 out of 10. Four, my second favorite racetam was gonna be that coloracetam, but pramoracetam slightly beat it. And I really don't know why it is. I've said this in my review, but there's something that makes me kind of want to take it. Uh, there's a kind of like this noticeable stimulation, but it's not a dopamine stimulation but there's just something extra with pramoracetam that I really enjoy I like taking it and I do get a lot of those typical racetam benefits to where thinking a little bit clearer it's easier to recall memories and words just come out a little bit better and it's just slightly more pleasant to me than something like coloracetam. So 8.5 for that pramoracetam. Lemon balm extract. So I was doing some research recently on lemon balm extract. It's one of my favorite sleep herbs. It's one of my favorite herbs in general. It has tons and tons of benefits. It's supposed to boost testosterone in men. I actually looked it up recently and apparently not only does it relax you and make you kind of sedated in a way, they actually did a study to where people were more relaxed, had less anxiety, but their focus was higher. It's tight a nootropic because it relaxes you but your brain power is higher I mean that's pretty much a nootropic so then I googled it and everybody's talking about lemon balm but I've probably been taking lemon balm for six or seven years right when Rich Piano released his supplement line a sleep blend and at the time everything that Rich Piana used if I had researched that area he used the best most out-of-the-box stuff ever so when he listed everything in his sleep blend I pretty much ordered little baggies of all the stuff to try on their own and one of them was lemon balm and it is one of my favorites of all time it's so relaxing it's so good for anti-anxiety i've only used it one time when i was overstimulated as kind of like a balancer and it was perfect it relaxed me a little bit but it didn't make me tired really like lemon balm it's one of my favorites of all time a great relaxing herb DMHA, now DMHA, now I didn't go too far on the stimulants here. There's tons of bulk stimulants. So I would say comparing DMAA to DMHA, I would say DMHA is a slight bit closer to a nootropic now. DMHA is this kind of next level stimulation. It's very hard because it feels similar to Adderall, but then it's also very, very different. Sometimes I'll try it and I'll be like, oh, this is totally different than Adderall. And sometimes I'll try it and it'll just give me such similar vibes that I've only had with Adderall. Like very long stimulation, very physical stimulation. When I mean, you compare it to something like the modafinils, it's just a very, very physical stimulation. I don't know how else to say it. But yeah, this stuff's kind of crazy. I rarely, rarely take it just because it's got more of this long lasting rough energy versus having some nootropic qualities. But I would say mainly in the first couple hours, it does have this next level focus, this next level bump. And it does seem like 
there is some definite dopamine being released there. Amp citrate, now I'm gonna have to go to eight to an 8.5 with amp citrate. For a next level stimulant that bulk stimulants offers, this is probably my favorite. It feels like most of the benefits of DMHA and DMAA, but it's a little bit more toned down. For me, I found that it, you know, it lasts a long time. It gave this next level energy, I really enjoyed it. But you know, at about five, six hours, it kind of tunes down versus DMHA, DMAA. Sometimes those can last all day and it's just not pleasant. And because they last all day, you might have a little bit of stimulation in the morning too. So um, I really like amp citrate as far as DMHA, DMA and amp citrate. I'd probably go with amp citrate. It's actually just called amp on their website. Okay, oxyracetam, I'm gonna have to go with a five out of 10. Now I've tried this several times. A lot of people do like it. I totally understand it. I just really don't like this stuff. Every time I've tried to get it to do something for me, I just, it doesn't do anything for me and I get super, super anxious. I heard one uh, reviewer say that they took this after a night of not sleeping and it was like the best thing ever. Maybe that's something I need to try out, I don't know. But because I've had such bad experiences, I just really don't want to take this stuff, guys. I don't, it just, I just don't want to take it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Now, aniracetam, now aniracetam, I kind of had a similar style reaction to it. I almost thought it was almost all the racetams when I first had this reaction. But um, even recently, I've tried just putting a little bit of aniracetam in, in a pill, taking it every day, even though it's supposed to, you could take like, end up taking a high dose of aniracetam. But I mean, I was taking probably 100 milligrams or less. I don't know if it was the aniracetam, but I just got this little vibe of I just, yeah, something feels off and I don't know what it is and I don't like it. And I can't say for sure it was the aniracetam, but before, like a month or two before, when I was trying aniracetam more, I would run into these situations where I really couldn't think, I didn't feel good, it was this bad kind of stimulation. So for me, aniracetam just, it just didn't flow with me. A lot of people like both these, so don't take my word 100% for it. A lot of people do like these, but for these two specifically, they just did not work for me. So Phenobit, now I actually have not tried Phenobit in a while, but I have tried it over the course of three or four years. For me, it was my go-to like anti-anxiety for me personally I don't know if it's gonna work for you but it, it was just literally the perfect thing that I would want and need for anti-anxiety it takes about three to four hours to max peak and then it lasts another eight hours so it's something you'd want to take kind of near the end of the day but definitely not right before bed because if you take a lot right before bed and uh, you might feel a little bit groggy in the morning but if you take a little bit near the midday or near the end of the day you end up waking up a little bit more um, refreshed and relax but um, this is one thing that a lot of people can get addicted to it a lot of people take it recreationally every time that I've tried to take this for fun or just to take it it just does not work I don't know what it is I just don't enjoy the feeling I don't want it but if I'm anxious like the more anxious that I am the more effective it is and it has one of these effects where it lasts all day so if I were to take let's say a Xanax like I was really anxious you know, three or four hours later, that Xanax is gone and the anxiety's back, you know. So the Fenibit, it's kind of nice taking something that lasts a long time, although it is gonna be a lot more milder than something like Xanax. It does work a little bit on the same receptors. Now, f Fenibit. now this is like the floral Fenibit. I really try to avoid the floral compounds as much as I can because if you look up, they're just completely toxic. People will say, oh, well, they're toxic on its own. We don't know how it's gonna react in this. I don't know. I just don't want any of these toxic compounds as much as I can. I want to avoid them. But um, I ran out of Finibit and I only had this f Finibit, and I actually really did enjoy it. You need a much lower uh, dosage on this stuff. For me, 30 milligrams is kind of like a chill zone. 60 milligrams, I feel it really strong. 90 milligrams is just way, way too strong. I think I was taking at least 60 or 90 and I was like, uh, walking around for my last little bit at work and I mean I almost could not stop myself from looking drunk because I just was so tired and out of it so um, like I said, 30s kind of relaxing, 60s kind of strong, 90s as strong as you could go. And then new pep, the last one. So I have taken new peps quite a bit. I think I've taken it even up to a month in a row. And if new pep is just something that I don't really feel, I would kind of compare it a little bit to coloracetam because it's, I don't feel bad. I guess I do feel a little bit more cognitive, you know, but it's not very noticeable. For some reason, I feel like I could feel coloracetam just a little bit more than new pep. But new pep is one of those ones where it has these 
these studies to where if you take it every day, it's supposed to actually improve your brain function, like 100% no BS. So if you want some improved brain function that's been proven, check out Nupex. But for me, I'm gonna have to give it a 7.5 just because I haven't seen too many effects, you know what I mean? Let me know what you thought about each of these compounds. Let me know what your ratings would be. I'd be very interested to see. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. Having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace. Thank you.